Dear yeah, ministers, dear yeah, Mr. Commissioner, dear yeah, Secretary of State, ladies and gentlemen, dear distinguished guests, welcome you all here and let me welcome those who follow us online uh, as well on this uh, uh, very uh, important event. We have very distinguished guests uh, for this event today and uh, uh, let me introduce first uh, uh, the speakers and the participants. Me, myself, uh, I am a member of the European Parliament uh, uh, from Fides and I will moderate the morning session of this high level today. It is really high level as we have three ministers among us, Commissioner and State Secretary, so welcome to the It's my pleasure to open the discussion of this international conference organized by the Ministry of Justice and the Ferenc Mali Institute of Cooperative Law, uh, which is the first official international conference held within the framework of the Conference on the Future of Europe. Today's conference is titled Dialogue on the Future of Europe is in Latin a key to the future. This topic is part of the EU agenda and generally likely to be the discussion is also very timely as we are approaching the December General Affairs Council, which will be of crucial importance regarding the credibility of the enlargement process. As our first round table discussion, we address this very issue. The title is Credible Enlargement Perspectives for a Stronger Europe. First, let me welcome Lili Borka, Hungarian Minister of Justice, and Peter Sriarto. Hungarian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, who spoke on this panel, highlighting the essential aspects of enlargement in the context of the conference on the future. I think it is my pleasure to welcome Mr. Oliver Barhei. I'm very happy that you could make it, Mr. Commissioner, Commissioner for Neighborhood and Enlargement, member of the European Commission. Mr. Barhei's expertise and insight is a special added value to this conference. The next speaker will be on the value of Hungarian member. Parliament, my colleague, who are, as a Voivodina Hungarian is excellently sees the stakes of their session. We are pleased that Jadranka Jokšimovic, the Minister of European Integration of Serbia, is also here with us, whose task is to facilitate and accelerate the process of negotiations between Serbia and the EU to oversee the preparations and legal approximation process in Serbia. She is the driving force behind the remarkable achievements of the Serbian government. Last but not least, I welcome Gaspar Dobzhan, State Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Slovenia, who will talk about the Slovenian approach to the credible enlargement policy. We are glad that the enlargement was one of the Slovenian presidency's priorities, and we welcome the presidency's efforts in this matter. And now I uh, Give the floor uh, to the speakers. Uh, 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 the first speaker, the first uh, person to open the series of speakers is Madam Minister Judith Varga. I give you the floor, Madam Minister. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Madame Minister, Secretary of State Commissioner, Honorable Madame MP, dear colleagues, Minister and dear MP, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, please allow me to personally express my gratitude to uh, Jadranka Joksimovic, Minister and Secretary of State Gasper Dovzhan for coming to Budapest in person, allowing us to discuss the future of Europe together, including one of the key issues, the accession options of the West Balkans region. Uh, I am also pleased to personally welcome uh, Oliver Varhei on the Delhi and King Gagal, European Parliament MP. Uh, everyone who is here is a dedicated supporter of the integration process in this region. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, uh, 
When it comes to the future of our continent, well, we have been discussing this topic for more than six months. And the Conference on the Future of Europe offers an excellent opportunity to all of us to discuss the issues and policies that inevitably occur concerning uh, the successful and uh, safe future of European citizens. One uh, such topic is the extension of the European Union, which is of key importance to the Hungarian government and has been for some time. With today's event, the Ministry of Justice is organizing the fourth key event that contributes to the pan-European discourse about the future of Europe. So I very much thank the embassies, the university, and social organizations for honoring us with their presence, and uh, much gratitude to them for allowing European citizens to voice their views on this topic. We are of the view that Europe needs to recognize that the West Balkans region is part of the European family in geographical, cultural, and historical terms. And we believe that this family needs to keep together. Jean Manet, one of the founding fathers of the Union, believes that we can get people to cooperate by showing them the differences between them and also the shared interests that go beyond the national borders. To us, Europeans, a uh, shared future is the promise of a flourishing and strong future. However, we need to write that future together, and therefore, EU institutions and member states need to cooperate to get to that target. The countries of Europe have a shared history, a deep-rooted shared history, so I'm firmly convinced that they can only have a shared future as well. Dear guests, uh, we are living through critical times. The European Union has been hit by a number of crises in recent years. We must admit that Brussels couldn't always give the right answers to this crisis. Uh, too often, they decided to go for a centralized solution without thoroughly and honestly consulting the member states that uh, create the foundations of the European Union and also European citizens. We Hungarians have always been clear on the fact that the real strength of Europe is in the diversity of citizens and not in false or mistaken ideology. We have all paid the price for the mistakes of Brussels. So finally, we also need to point out that without the different national identities, uh, there is no Europe either. And therefore, Europe should return to the path of common sense and realize that strong member states are not part of the problem, but part of the solution. And although we cannot bring back the European, uh, the United Kingdom, it must be clear to everyone that Brussels needs to give up its its practice of alienating member states. And the time has come to welcome new countries in our community and to create a stronger European Union based on stronger nations. We believe in a Europe that uh, instead of following rules uh, identified by others, is able to formulate its own interests. Instead of just always responding to the world around us, we must become uh, the controllers and managers of events around us. Uh, we actually need to give up premature decisions, and uh, we need to start overcoming difficulties whilst building a creative and unique solutions offered by European Union's member states. We Central Europeans, ladies and gentlemen, know that the path of accession is sometimes not smooth altogether. We need to overcome difficulties, and sometimes we face painful failures. During my career, I have seen bureaucracy in Brussels, the kind of bureaucracy that actually uh, served as an obstacle to the efficient operation of the European Union. In the case of Junkers, we could also see a lack of political will. And we all remember that uh, at the beginning of his mandate as the president, he firmly rejected the idea of extension. Uh, after five years of inaction, I am pleased to see that the fate and the uh, stability of the West Balkans region has become a priority in the Commission of von der Leyen. 
Uh, more and more people realize that it's in our strategic interest to go for extension, so we must stand united and work together on reinstating the unity of the European Union and ensure that the European community is indeed open to enlargement. Ladies and gentlemen, Hungary has always been a staunch supporter of the extension of the European Union. One good example uh, includes is the accession talks with Croatia, which started during the Hungarian presidency and to this day is seen as one of the great success stories. The V4 countries are supporting a number of projects in the West and Balkan regions uh, from training, education to innovation and the reinforcement of the business sector through to regional developments or topics such as environmental protection. We have always stood by the prosperity of the region and that will not change in the future. Since 2019, in the person of Oliver Weihey, uh, we have have a Hungarian commissioner responsible for neighborhood policy and the uh, enlargement process who will ensure that we remain open to this topic. And we wish to thank him for his dedicated work. In order to keep our credibility, the U European Union should start keeping its promises. There is an important dilemma in front of us. We either accelerate the accession process and the enlargement process or put additional obstacles in the path of enlargement. It's no question to me that the European Union must recognize and acknowledge the reforms and efforts of these countries, and finally, it should fulfill its obligations concerning the enlargement. There is only one way, and that is the way forward. And the affected countries must continue walking the path they started walking, and they must actually preserve the trust despite receiving giving mixed signals from Brussels from time to time. Ladies and gentlemen, which issue could be more forward-looking than the extension of the European Union? I am convinced that, as it is re referenced by the title of today's conference, this is truly the key to a strong future of the continent. And therefore, we cannot envisage a conference without a discourse on the enlargement, and we must do that with the direct involvement of the representatives of the countries involved. Hungary's position is clear. Prime Minister Viktor Orban paid special attention to the extension policy in his speech. At each EU platform, each time I actually uh, call for the invitation of uh, the relevant countries, and in the October plenary session, that actually was realized, thanks for the support of the Slovenian presidency, where our Western Balkans partners could also deliver their positions. Uh, I am convinced that we must, uh, without delay, start accession talks with North Macedonia, and the intergovernmental conferences and uh, discourses play an important part in this. Uh, with Montenegro and with Serbia, we apply so-called clusters, well, it, particularly with Serbia, and we open different chapters, clusters. And uh, as the EU highlighted in the seven points uh, uh, published, the European Union has a vested interest in uh, the accession of Serbia, more so than Serbia. And to that end, we need to accelerate work at the level of the Council and to reach tangible results. We are asking for member states to show solidarity and allow the European Union to make progress in such an important matter. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that today's conference is a unique opportunity to have an honest and open discussion with our partners about the opportunities and challenges of extension. Uh, we need more dialect participation and more visits in each other's capitals to allow us to share share first-hand information about experiences and thus deepen our trust in each other. Right from the beginning, Hungary has called for the involvement of the West Balkans region in uh, this series of discussions, and therefore we welcome this development. Uh, 
hope, uh, encouragement, and a safe European future are the main messages. We also welcome the efforts of Slovenia, without which the Pridovi summit couldn't have been organized. Hungary recognizes that uh, summits have become recurring components in this process, which signal not only uh, the weight of this issue, but also its political significance. Uh, it's also one of the milestones of a certain and safe European future that should be based on the joint cooperation of member states in the spirit of an honest dialogue to be able to build a European Union that stands in unity amongst diversity. With respect to the historical wars around us, please allow me to quote Istvan Széchenyi in conclusion, uh, the greatest Hungarian, as we call him. Well, we have no control over our past, but we are in control of our future. This is the thought that should be guiding our joint future image. Thank you. Thank you very much.